just get that. Okay, hello, hello. Hope everyone's well. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. I can't really see you, but I say I say good to see you. What I mean to say is thanks for joining, being a part of the live stream here tonight. Monday rant on Tuesday. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing a Monday rant tonight because it is Tuesday, so I'm just going to have a, not a rant, a chat, and we're going to have a chat about a few things that I want to discuss tonight. One thing in particular, um, no, I did not pick a winner in the cup today, Cal. In fact, I picked a loser. I dropped $12 on a, um, a horse that did not win. But that's okay. Um, uh, you know, look, you know, it's only 12 bucks, and it was just a bit of fun. Always have a bit of fun with the cup. So I didn't win, that's okay. Uh, Chris Visard joined. Good to see you, Chris. Whiskey and drinkies. Um, Calte, Ali's Whiskies. Benoit Jasmine, Dram Fan, 45 Finn, Dave Miller, Sable Scotch. Look at all these wonderful people joining. Fantastic. More like Perth. Good to see you, uh, Diane. Okay. So what I wanted to touch on tonight was um, a couple of, uh, just a one topic in particular. So it's one subject I wanted to brush up on tonight, which was about whiskey clubs. Now, those who joined in on the stream on Sunday, uh, Sunday? Ooh, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, it was Sunday, yeah. Sunday afternoon. I'll say afternoon. It was 6 p.m. It was an early session on Sunday. Uh, I didn't get many people tuning in because I was at the wrong time slot. And it was sort of like, it was a very short live and it didn't uh, stay live. It's, or it went live, but I didn't actually get to save it. So uh, it was only on the stream for sort of maybe, uh, maybe sort of, you know, three or four hours like following. So anyway, what I'm going to do tonight is sort of talk a bit more in depth about what I meant to talk about on that Sunday. Which is talking about whiskey clubs. So, what the question the, the question when I was, that I um that was posed to me on the, on that session was, um, you know, what was I doing that night? I was actually I was enjoying whiskey with a few friends, which you would safely call a whiskey club. And then it's it's the value of what a whiskey gathering, a whiskey club, a group of friends does and gets together. And I'm going to use my personal experience here, and I'm going to mention a few things and how to how to do it really well. And I'll need these here to sh show something here as well. So, um. So on the point of the um, of creating your own whiskey club, so this is how to create your own in a way. The best way I've found to do it is two models, and I'm going to discuss both. The best way to do it, I find, is to bring is to get in touch with a few like-minded friends who you know enjoy Scotch whiskey um, and have a good taste for Scotch whiskey, and maybe have a small collection of their own at home, and then to give them a call and say, hey, or send them a message or whatever, and say, hey, I'm, I want to get together each month. Once a month, once uh, or once every two months, or four times a year, once a quarter, or uh, you know whatever it is, and say, oh, I want to get together and I want to open some really nice bottles and share them around with people who enjoy them. Now, my first tip there is that saying that the first thing, good thing about that is everyone want to bring something good because it's sort of like it's a little bit of sort of one-upmanship. Everyone wants to bring a nice bottle or something interesting, something unique, something rare, something new, something old. Um, and you can sometimes theme them. You can say you could do a, like a peated session or you could do a world whiskey session or you could do a um, whatever it is or a single cask session or something like that. Uh, so theming them along something is always a bit of fun. But one that I really like to do is just say bring a bottle. And the best, the best number that I found that works best is no more than nine or ten people. So the best whiskey clubs I find are the ones where it's about nine or ten guests all up. So that's not a big number. I'm going to preface by saying that is not a big number, but it's a it's a reasonably manageable number, especially for people living in smaller places um, or whatever your circumstance may be. So that was my first uh, my first sort of tip tonight. I was talking about how to create a whiskey club for those who are just joining in, um, and what the, what it means to create a whiskey club and how it works. So I recommend bringing something. Now you'll find you, then you then you once you've set a date and you've got a few friends coming over, open a bottle. And find one that you want to drink with some friends who will enjoy it. I've actually got in front of me here. Uh, I don't know if the cam if the if there's enough um, camera real estate for you to catch all this in one hit. But here's three bottlings from the SMWS from three different eras of the society. And we've got a um, a paper label era, which was just bottled two thousand and four, I should say. A plastic label era, as I call it, uh, which was bottled two thousand and twelve. No, it must have been, could have been, wouldn't have been, 12, would have been, wait, 06, oh, sorry, sorry, 2015, sorry. And then a um, paper, a new paper label era, which is actually a special edition bottling, that one. That was a, um, I could use it in sort of a normal bottling, actually, it might make more sense, rather than one of the gathering bottlings. There you go. Western Wanderer, I had a taste of that the other night. 
Um, so that gives you three different options, th three ideas of things. And if, if, uh, if I'm being honest, at the moment, what I would do if I was starting my own whiskey club, I'd probably want to open something a bit special, something from the paper label era, or something from the um, a recent uh, sort of plasticated label era. I don't know what the word for that is. Our old design, and then or something from our new designs, like the Western Wanderer, the nice, lovely, lovely bottle of ten there. So. With that said, that's what the ways to do it is to form a date, set a location, someone's house, and that person can normally just you know ask you. You can either chip in, people can chip in for for catering, or they or that host can put something on on the proviso. Sort of every host eventually hosts something. The other way to do it is to is to do a sort of a, a buy-in process, where everyone buys a ticket to your event. If something like that, which would be a low price ticket, especially if you've not done too many of these before and people buy in to come along and you provide all the whiskey. So that's at your expense rather than everyone else's. Um, what to bring for a whiskey tasting as well, for a, sorry, your own little club tastings at home or at work. Uh, what I recommend is just taking the one bottle. Now this sounds, it's always tempting to look at your shelf and go, oh, you know, I'm gonna take that, but I'm also gonna take that, and, oh, and I'm also gonna take that, and suddenly you end up with all these bottles that you brought, and by the time people get around to actually drinking them on the day, um, and often they're a bit lost. They sort of you might get a bit sort of uh, lost in the sort of the mix of things, and it's like, oh well, I should have shouldn't have opened that one, or you know, sort of I, I you know, whatever it is. And you say, well, sort of, they, especially if you're going to bring something super heavily peated, and they want to put it near the end. I'll talk about lineups whilst, whilst I'm here as well. How to? Um, I should say, how a few people, Petrino, uh, uh, Lishia Noz. I, I can't even say your Instagram name. I'm sorry, Mr. Cream Thirty Three, Tubbs Taz. Uh, Chris Weir 05, good to see you all. Thanks for joining him. Um, um, where was I? So yes, I was saying that um, bring some, bring something special. Don't bring too many bottles. And the third tip I'd give you on starting your own whiskey club is um, what I was going to say about the third tip it was escaped my mind just for a moment. Is oh yeah, um, I would also say like uh, like I said the numbers, the 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 type of bottling to bring. And the order. So the order of which you do the whiskies, you taste them, it is, is quite important. And that normally is revol that involves sort of, you know, place them in a lineup. It, when, when people, you know, when everyone arrives with their bottle, put them all in a lineup like this and go, oh, that one should go before that one and move them around a bit. Form your order before you start. That's the best tip I can give you at the moment as well. And the last little bonus tip is, if, if, unless you've got all your own glassware um, for people to enjoy their whiskey out of, if you're hosting, ask people to bring a glass. It's not that big an ask, really. They bring a bottle anyway. Ask them to bring their favorite glass. Some people will enjoy things like this, our Society Coppeters, which, as a little shameless plug, they also come in a six-pack online. Um, but otherwise, you can um, you can get them uh, as individual, I think, still, or as doubles. And they're a great way to enjoy whiskey at home and to share them around with people. So, um, question from Cal says, uh, in your opinion, would that bring a bottle as a ticket versus a cash ticket? Will that lower the people... Coming, hope that makes sense. Yeah, it will, Cal. That's why I'm a big fan of the first one, which is just bring a bottle. Because then it's kind of like, they've already sort of invested in coming because they want to bring something special and they want to open something special for those who they know will appreciate it. Um, the whole buying a ticket thing is sort of like, for a private tasting at home, it's kind of like you're asking people to come, you know, pay money to enjoy your company, which is a bit different from going to a professional tasting like what we do, but it's a bit sort of like, it can limit your audience a bit, but if you've got some friends, it doesn't have to be nine or ten. If you've got some friends, like three or four guys or girls who just enjoy good whiskey, that's all it's about. And that's uh, and that was really sort of my point tonight about starting your own whiskey club. Is about it's really quite it's a quite a rewarding experience that you can learn a lot about whiskey and from the people you drink with. And that's it was a huge part of my formative time of getting into the whiskey industry was being part of one of those. It was one that I actually co-founded with um, a, a good old friend of mine, Dave Withers. And he and I, he he, uh, he founded it at the time. He talked to me about doing it because he said well, he really wanted to be part of a whiskey group, just people who he knew were sort of like really like proper aficionados of whiskey. And I didn't think I was, but I he certainly saw me in that light, and I and I really appreciate that. And I um this was mind you, this is like eight years ago, nine years ago, and he, he uh, and he and I sort of sat down and um uh, we drank some whiskey and we got together about five friends at the time, so it was about five or six or seven of us at the time. And then it ended up being about nine in the end, and now it's about eight. So it, it has shrunk by one because one of our one of our members moved to Melbourne. But um, 
yeah, so it was a chance for us to sort of, you know, put put some minds together, put some bottles together and have a bit of fun with it. Um, Mr. Creamer asks, asks uh, so to clarify, latest outturn arrived in the post today, 68.28, only available in the bundle. Yes, Mr. Kareem, I'm afraid so. Just for the meantime, um, we're going to offer up the bundles um, just as they are at the moment. There's a, there's a nice sort of special bottle in at least each one. So it's only in the bundle and it's deliberately crafted for that bundle as in like we've picked that cask out to balance that bundle out and create something interesting. Um, but it's only in the bundle for the meantime. So it might be... Um, we might release it as an individual release, maybe closer to, maybe after outturn, if there's any left, that is, if there's any left, so it's, you know. Um, now Cal asks, sorry, uh, no, 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 IT, IT, here we go. Cal asks, how do you find these people? Let's pretend that the SMDS crew does not exist. How do you find these aficionados enthusiasts? Uh, Cal, often it can be online, and it can often be through just Facebook, through some Facebook conversations, through groups through like the society group, but if we're pretending that the society group doesn't exist, then it might be things like, um, uh, it might be things like other other Facebook groups like the Dramful and whatnot. Um, they're a good way to meet, meet people in the community and say, hey, I'm, I'm new in the community and I wanna, uh, I'd love to taste some whiskey with you. And you know, sort of, you know, sort of it's, it's such a social community these days online. So it's like, it's, it's great to meet people online with those sort of things. Otherwise, I often, often met these people at things like whiskey fairs and whiskey shows. And just you know, getting together with them there, and you find who you who who you match with and who you don't in many ways, just on a friendship level, and just saying, "Hey, do you want to drink some whiskey sometime?" And open some special bottles, and that was how it came about. Actually, with it, with my friend Scott, that's how it came about with my friends uh, Josh and Ben. We met through different means. It was sort of like um, you know, and sort of in that way. And it's actually funny. A lot of us who end up starting guild end up uh, in this whiskey guild that we created. Uh, now a lot of us from that guild now work in whiskey, um, so it's a really it's a really cool way to sort of form industry connections, um, learn a lot about spirit, discuss it, and the way that I'm going to just I'll just finish off talking about whiskey clubs. Just I'll talk about finish up on this point as well. Partner bars and shows are a good place to meet people too. Yes, partner bars are a great place to meet people for these kind of um, purposes as well. Uh, good point, SMN. And you do meet you meet some fascinating members and and friends and uh, lifelong friends at, at partner bars and, and bars around the world, which is fantastic. Uh, one of the points I'll finish with as well is, um, uh, as I was saying, how you structure the actual tasting as well is quite important. In some cases, people like to drink whiskey, have a meal, and then drink some whiskey later. Um, or you might like, in some, in one case, in one club that I'm in, it's often a case of you start with a meal and sort of you start the afternoon or evening with a nice meal and then you move to whiskey later on in the night. Uh, in other cases, it's the other way around. We all, have, we all drink some whiskey. Then we go out and get some dinner later. So that's kind of like, um, sometimes we do it together, but it's it's really up to you. It's how you, how you preference it. Um, I was gonna say, yeah, so how you, and then you gotta think about, pardon me, you gotta think about how you structure, uh, how you structure the actual tasting. So do you wanna, um, do you wanna be like, uh, what's the word for it? Um, Will you talk about sort of? Will you talk about each whiskey as you go, or does everyone quietly make notes, or will it be a discussion? I like the discussion style one. We all talk at the table about what we like about it. Talk if, if you know a bit about the distillery, you can learn a bit about the distillery. You can discuss what you like about it, other expressions from that distillery you've tried, why you've picked it. I like each person talking about why they picked it out as well. I think that's a really cool story. Why that bottle's important to them, and what they liked about it, which is really a lovely way to do it as well. Um, Cocktail Co joined, good to see you. Baghdad Cafe Court joined. I, I think this is the first time I've seen you here. Um, speaking of whiskey fair, did Melbourne get a day or date yet, or is it will it be back in Sydney? Um, well, there is a whiskey show in Melbourne each year, but a whiskey fair is only a Sydney thing, Cal. I'm not sure what you mean. But I'm pretty sure, no, whiskey fair, the, the Sydney whiskey fair is a Sydney whiskey fair, the big one each year here in Sydney. Um, but there's no, there's a Melbourne whiskey show I know of, and Whiskey Lives in Melbourne, which is, which is okay. Um, and speaking of whiskey fair, no, um, any new, uh, re Tassie SMWS event, Mr. Kareem, watch this space. I'm still working on it. I'm very sorry. There's a lot going on at the moment. Um, Dr. Tim asks, how do you think the shared taste experience brings people together? That's an awesome question, Tim. Um, it brings people together because people actually discover different spirit types and form a discussion around regionality, around spirit style, around cask type and and it, as you know, with great flavor, evokes great memory. And so those memories come flooding back to you often with different things you taste and you say, 
wow, I've not tasted anything like this before, or, or this reminds me of candy floss from my childhood, or this reminds me of this. Um, and that shared, that shared experience, that sort of um, can actually, it's sort of, it, people can relate to it on, on, not just on a taste level, but on, and not just on a geographical level, but also on a, um, on a timeline of, of things they've tasted before and what they enjoy in that spirit, which I find that kind of discussion amazing. And, and people sort of uh, be, sort of really actually had these almost like, I like to call them whiskey epiphanies through what they taste and how they experience it, um, which is really exciting. So that's, and that's, and that's how people, if that's, if how people enjoy it, that's how they enjoy it. Now, uh, as just one little thing to mention from Outturn, I'm not sure if I really got into it last night and I won't really get into it tonight either, but there's two things I want to mention. There's all these amazing Christmas events coming up all around the country. I'm not sure how well that's coming out on camera. But um, all these amazing whiskey events, which are a lot of, they're going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're gonna, there's going to be barbecue at some, live music at other, a lot, uh, distillery tasting in the other, some private casks rolled out, some all sorts of stuff, whiskey and chocolate pairings, festive drams in Adelaide, everything coming up. There's so many good Christmas events coming up. You don't have to wait for Outturn to book them. They're already online. So if you've not booked your tickets yet for any of our Christmas events, and yes, uh, Mr. Kareem, Tazzy events will be announced shortly as well, I promise. Um uh, and of course, for a couple of those events, at least two, maybe three of them, they're in our steps format, which means that you we, you turn up, we give you a bunch of or whis- uh, of whiskey tokens, which are these um, poker chips, and you turn up, and for each dram, you hand over a, a whiskey chip, a, a chip, and you get a dram. So it's just like the old system with the stamps, but instead of being stamps, it's um, whiskey chips, if you like. So they're poker chips, but they're um, they are whiskey chips, and each one is nicely um, imprinted with our our logo there. And so they are going to be quite they're quite appealing looking. They're quite they've got a nice weight and a nice feel to them. So I guarantee you that they might get pinched. Some might get pinched in the night, but if they get pinched, then you don't get your whiskeys. It's really that simple. So please don't try and pinch them. But they're they're not cheap. Um, where are we? So that's that's um, that's where I'm up to at the moment. So it'd be really nice to see you all at those Christmas events. That's all from me tonight. Not a big one tonight, just a 20 minute live catch up, live every single night, uh, and something to talk about every night. And that tonight was talking about how to create your own whiskey club. And so that's um, that would be uh, really great to see you all there at our at whiskey events as well, as I said at the end of here. And um, uh, hopefully I'll have some more outturn uh, news for you as we're going forward in the week, how to approach it, what you, what to look for, and any questions you have along the way. Um, <laughs> Benoit, yes, you can buy more drams if you use all the chips. That'll be especially for Melbourne because Melbourne's quite a lightweight event uh, in, the, in terms of just, if you remember last year, it was three drams incl- and all food included in the ticket, but you can buy more chips on the day, which you just, you just, we, you, it'll be but yeah, five drams, five, five chips, whatever it is. Uh, for the Sydney and Perth events, I think we're doing the chips as well. Uh, however, or unless Perth might be a bit different, but for um, Sydney, we're certainly doing the chips program and there'll be a couple of bottlings on the tables which are two chip uh, redeem. They might be the same for Melbourne. I have, we haven't worked that far ahead yet. We've still got a month. We're still working towards it. Um, yeah, that was a really good I actually, I actually quite like the joke on that Calte, so <laughs> resale value on these chips. Well, if you, if you sold them, you could certainly sell them. They're basically a dram token, so they're worth a, the price of a dram, so that's at least some value. Um, that's all from me tonight. Thank you so much for um, tuning in, for always watching our live. I love it. I love that people are tuning in every single night. It's always a good chance for us to catch up, have have a dram. and uh, talk. I haven't actually had a dram yet, but um, you know, catching up and having a chat about a few things, uh, about all the good things about whiskey and the community that it brings together and everything around it. I love the SMWS and I love talking to you guys about whiskey and everything around it. So that's all from me tonight. Um, Have a great evening. It's a very lazy, quiet Tuesday night. So I'm gonna um, call it an evening shortly and I'll speak to you soon. Oh, before I go, um, tomorrow night uh, is a live stream in here, a very special one. We're gonna broadcast it, uh, hopefully, if it all things, if it all works, technology. Um, We're gonna broadcast it both to Instagram and Facebook group. And it's going to be a live stream book review and and sort of literature whiskey literature discussion with Murray Hassan. You've seen Murray on here before for those who have been tuning in lots of times before. 
Uh, if you haven't seen if you haven't seen Murray in here yet before, then you will tomorrow night, which is really exciting because it's like I said, if we're doing live every night, sometimes I'm going to have special guests, and tomorrow night we'll be um, with Mr. Hassan, Mr. Murray Hassan. We're going to be talking all things whiskey literature, some great books to look through, and some great things to discuss. Especially, we're going to also he and I are both going to review something uh, in Outturn, which is really exciting. So we're going to taste through something in Outturn and uh, go from there. Cheers, and I'll see you tomorrow.